I'm David from Levic Photography, and today I am revisiting our, our macro. This is our second video. And so for our examples today, if you want to come over here and take a look, we've got two uh, camera sensors. And this one's an APS-C size sensor out of an Icon 5000. And this little sensor is out of a 16 megapixel Kodak point and shoot, who knows what it was. Just something that somebody gave me that they broke that I tore apart. But anyway, we're going to take some tight shots, probably of this lens, but we just want to have a look at this one just to see what it looks like here. Because we're shooting an APS-C size sensor with an APS-C size sensor. I just thought that would be kind of interesting. So anyway, we'll throw this down here. And again, we have the Spartan rail. And this is a Spartan macro rail. These run about 70 bucks, 80 bucks, somewhere around there. I actually have no idea what they cost, but I'm assuming that's about what they are. And this again gives me the ability to focus this way and dial in uh, whatever I need to do this way. So I've got two lateral. I got shift and focusing. So this is how you manual focus right off the bat. And if you want to take a look at the back of the camera. So we've got this gauged on our screen. And let me go to our display here. Actually, I want to leave it on. Um, do I want to be two over? Probably not. Let's bring this down. I'll be one stop over for this. So I've got it on aperture priority right now. And you can see we've got peak focusing turned on. So this just lets me know where we're focusing in at. The lens is wide open, all the way at f3.5. The f-stop is wide open. And you need to do that, and that gives you the shallow depth of field. You do that to open it up to find out where it's actually focusing. Then, once we have it focused in, we'll go ahead and step it down to f22. And from here, I can take a picture. Now, right now, there's no adapters actually on this body. So, we, uh, we're shooting one-to-one. -one. And basically, uh, you know, what this means is that uh, the distance from here, from the convergence to the sensor, the image is one-to-one. -one. So now, we're going to go ahead and throw an adapter on it. Now this is focused as close as we can possibly focus with this lens right now, just so you know. So infinity is way back here. Now my goal with this is to get this thing completely in focus. And if I look right now, the back of it is slightly blurry, whereas the front of this is rock sharp. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take this off and then we'll add a, uh, a macro adapter and just really quick this is a uh, this would be a standard macro adapter and a lot of you guys were wondering about this this is a Nikon tilt adapter and then now we can focus in at uh, 2 to 1 and so I'll open the lens all the way back up again and now we can scoot back and I can you can see with the focus rail I can get in a lot tighter so now that allows me to get really close but really what I wanted to achieve was the exact opposite and focusing outward to right about let me see here if I focus all the way out Okay, if I go right here with our tilt adapter on here, now here's the beauty of the tilt adapter. I can turn this and get an angle from the side so you can really see it. When I turn this, it tilts the lens down. And this is the amount of degrees. So I can go down, in this case, let's say four, four degrees. That's right in the middle. And now the lens looks slightly bent. Now what that does is when you bend your focal plane to the actual focusing surface, so that means that we're kind of arcing our focus down, uh, 
that allows us to get more in focus automatically. So now I've got it wide open and I'll focus in here and you can see that uh, even at f3.5 we have more in focus. Now I'll go ahead and stop down to f22 and let's go ahead and take a picture right here. We can see our back is actually in focus. So we got the whole object in focus, which was our goal. Now this is actually a pretty easy object because it's big. I mean this is this is not a small object. You know, this is an APS C side sensor. This is the mount, including the mount, it's probably one and a half inches by two and a half inches, somewhere around there. So it's fairly large. But in this situation, what if we wanted to get just this sensor? So that means that we would have to get extremely close to it. Now, with our stack adapter here, if we try to focus all the way in on our sensor, this gives us a magnification of two to one. And you can see that we're pretty much focused in. And because we're tilted at four degrees, now when I stop this down to F22 and now we're zoomed all the way in or focused all the way in with the front of the lens. The front element is as close as it can possibly get. So this has a magnification now of 2 to 1. And uh, it's very easy to get this in focus. The whole thing. Now we're shooting this at a slightly, I lowered the camera down, we're at a lower angle. And we have our sensor again. And because we have our macro adapter tilted, at 8 degrees down towards the object. Now you can see that we've got this very shallow depth of field that we're trying to deal with here. So if we stop this down to F32 and let me take a picture here. And you can see we got the back and the front of the sensor pretty much in focus. Slightly soft because we're at F32 but the whole thing is in focus. And that's because of the tilt adapter. Now, <clears throat> how close can we actually get into this thing with this lens? So there's two ways to do this. And let me show you option number one. <clears throat> and that would be with a standard set of macro adapters. And this right here would be considered one standard set of macro tubes. And these are, th these are dirt cheap. This is the $7 set. It's not anything crazy. Bought these off of eBay. And I like the, the regular tubes simply because if you change camera formats like I did from Sony to Nikon, or sometimes I use a Minolta lens, uh, these screw together so just the top and the bottom need to be changed for different formats. So I can use these with my Minolta and make the extension tube even longer. But in this case, we can't go super long. So we have our one adapter on here already. And then we're going to put this adapter on. And let's see what this gives us now. And we can rotate. Actually, i got to rotate this back. Okay, now we're at a very shallow film plane, meaning that we're at like 15 degrees above uh, this. So trying to focus in on this is going to be a little tricky. And for this we'll probably have to back all the way out. Here is one of the problems that we run into doing macro photography. We're running out of room. So even though we've got this great lens on here, It's smacking the glass. So this is, at this shallow of a film plane, this is as close as to what I can get in focus. Which really is not all that great. So if I step it all the way down to F32. Okay. Alright, so if we take a picture there. Let's take a look at this really quick. It's soft. But what we're looking at is primarily in focus. And here's the actual photo. Okay, so 
you know, we're starting to run into some optical problems here because we're stopped all the way down. We're trying to figure out how to get this thing in focus. With our 55 millimeter micro, we're almost on top of this. So this isn't working so well. And this is because we're actually at infinity and because we're focused at infinity, that doesn't allow us to get all that close. So, so at this point, the focus stack is too much for this lens. And we shouldn't even really be trying it with this. This is overwhelming for our 55 millimeter micro. It's kind of like the buck stops here kind of thing. Is there another way we can do this? Yes. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to show you guys something completely different. So we, we ran out of room. We hit a wall. So what do we do? Well, there's an easy solution to this. And if you only have the one lens, I recommend this. If you have more than one lens, then there's no point. But what we can do is I got some gaffers tape over here. So I tore off myself a piece right here. And we're going to take this and focus it all the way out and then put it on here backwards. That's right, backwards. Now you can buy adapters that allow you to mount them backwards, whatever. That totally works. But in this case, gaffer's tape is just as good as anything else. You don't have to go real high tech. You don't have to tape it on there like it's on there for the rest of its life. But we'll use two pieces here just to be on the safe side. Just one on the bottom to make sure it doesn't move around too much. <clears throat> and then that gives us a little bit of focusing room. So now we've got our lens backwards. And this is a little different. So now we can come up pretty close to our object. And our magnification ratio, on the other side we got to 4 to 1. Now if you can see, back this out here, this is where we're focused in on the front of our sensor. So let me go ahead and rotate our sensor around here so we've got more of a corner. And I'm going to raise this up because I feel like we're shooting just a hair too low. Not too much, just a little bit. Okay, so you see our setup. You can see that we're in focus in the middle of our image here. I can pull it out so we're more focused on the front. And I'll point it down just so we can see the circuitry a little bit more. Now, the focus mag magnification, because we flipped the lens over, is probably closer to 6 to 1 now, which is actually pretty good. But come around to this side and have a look at what a mess this is. Okay, so right here, we still have aperture control. So we've got to step it all the way down again. And we've got to go into, uh, this time we're going to, yeah, let's go all the way in. No, actually that's a little, it's pushing a little bit, right there. So we, we're going to shoot this at f22. And now you can see our magnification is actually quite good. Now the magnification of this is actually pretty good. And it's amazing that we can get this close. The only problem is lighting this becomes a problem. So now I can bring my flashlight over it. And yes, you can just light macro lights with keychain flashlights. They're actually really good for lighting. So we'll go ahead and we'll take an exposure with that. Basically, this is our ultimate limit of what we can do with this setup. So, you know, but the real reason why I love this lens is not so much for its macro capability, but for its flat field capability, meaning there's no barrel distortion, there's no pin cushion effect, extremely low uh, chromatic aberrations, if any, at all. And, you know, the fact that it actually focuses to infinity and stays really sharp. So it's just a good general purpose lens altogether to give you the best optical quality. But for macro, it's just perfect. Can you see it pretty well? And, you know, it has all of the metering on it for you. And, uh, you know, you pick these up for somewhere between maybe 100 and 150 bucks. 
And the only thing that you have to be aware of is that these are old. So when you go to Google Nikkor PC Micro Lens, uh, you're going to discover that you know there's a lot of these out there, but you have to be careful with the amount of dust that shows up in these lenses because some are dustier than others. And that's not necessarily an issue, but it can be. Uh, I've got one that I had to sell because it actually had too much dust in it. But occasionally, if it's just under the first front or rear element, I'll just take those elements out and clean them. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys like this quick little video. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and click on the ads because that helps me down the road. And subscribe to my channel for more information like this. Otherwise, you guys have a good day.